Hi, and welcome once more to First Year Undergraduate Microeconomics. When we introduced our perfectly competitive market model, we had a convenient assumption. That convenient assumption was that demand curves slope down and supply curves slope up. In this presentation, we want to ask a simple question. Is that assumption always true? Well, the simple answer is no. It's generally true. In most markets, in most situations, demand slopes down and supply slopes up. But it's not always true. There are situations where you might get demand curves sloping up over a range of prices or supply curves sloping down over a range of prices. Those type of markets can be really interesting because you can get multiple equilibria. You can get situations where markets tip. In other words, random events can decide whether, on the internet say, one platform is successful or another platform is successful. Now, they're great topics to explore in later economics courses, but in this presentation I'm just going to show you a simple example where the supply curve doesn't always slope up. To illustrate, let's use a simple example. Suppose that you have a part-time job, you currently work 20 hours per week, and you get paid $15 per hour. Suppose your boss offers you a really great deal. She will give you a pay rise and you get to choose how many hours you would like to work, no questions asked. You can work as many hours as you like, you can work as few hours as you like. What would your answer be? Well clearly we're asking a supply curve question. Given the price, given the wage that your boss offers you, how many hours would you like to work? And let's keep it at hours per week, over, say, a year. Now I want you to actually do this, so if you haven't got a pen and paper handy, go and grab one. Stop the presentation. Get it? Okay, you're back again. You've got your pen and paper. The first wage that we had was $15 an hour. So let's start off by asking how many hours you would actually like to work at $15 per hour. Remember you're looking at hours per week and you're making that commitment for the whole year. In our example I said 20 but you write down how many hours you'd actually like to work. Okay, done that. Now let's pick a different wage. Let's imagine that your boss says well I'll pay you $30 an hour. How many hours would you like to work per week over the year? Write down your answer. Okay, let's get serious here. Let's suppose your boss says, hey, you know what? You are valuable. I'm going to pay you $100 an hour. How many hours would you like to work per week over the entire year? Write down your answer. D did I say $100? Oh, gee, yeah. No, sorry. Your boss thinks you're really valuable. Your boss is willing to offer you $1,000 an hour. How many hours would you be willing to work now per week over the year? How many will you commit to? Write it down. Okay, now let's get serious here. You are worth it. Let's suppose your boss is willing to offer you $10,000 per hour worked. How many hours would you be willing to work over the course of the year? Let's boost it again. Let's suppose your boss said to you, that she would be willing to pay you $100,000 per hour for each hour you work. You get to choose how many hours you work per week over the course of the year. How many hours? Put down your answer. Let's boost it again. Let's suppose your boss says to you, I'm willing to pay you one million, I'm not going to draw all the zeros, one million dollars per hour for every hour you work, you get to choose how many hours you want to work over the year. How many hours will you choose? Write down your answer. Last one, let's suppose your boss says, I'm willing to pay you $10 million an hour. As many hours as you like per week over a year. How many hours will you want to work? Write it down. So now you've got your list of choices. For each wage you have chosen how much you would like to sell, how much you would like to supply. And I want to ask you a simple question. 
did you always choose to work more as the wage went up? Or, when it got to, say, a million bucks an hour, did you actually start working less? If you answer yes, at some point you decided not to work as many hours, even though the wage had gone up, then your supply curve for labour doesn't always slope up, it sometimes slopes down. If you don't believe me, draw it. Draw the numbers you actually came up with. You'll see your supply curve starts to bend the wrong way. Now, this is a bit of a silly example, but it illustrates the point. That supply curves and demand curves can slope the wrong way. Now let's ask another question. Why? Why can they slope the wrong way? Well, let's think about the choice that you make when your wage goes up. Two things happen when your boss offers you a higher wage. The first is a substitution effect. The substitution effect simply says when your wage goes up, the cost to you of having an hour off work, the cost to you of leisure, goes up. Leisure becomes relatively expensive. So you're going to tend to switch away from the good that's relatively expensive towards other goods. That means you're going to have less leisure and you're going to work more. So the substitution effect tends to push the supply curve up. The equivalent for a demand curve involves the substitution effect pushing the demand curve down. When, for example, apples become cheaper, that means that other goods have become relatively more expensive. You tend to buy more apples and fewer other goods. That's the substitution effect. But there's also a thing that we call the income effect. Suppose you're offered a wage of a million dollars an hour. You might say to yourself, hey, you know, I, I can't spend more than a hundred million dollars in my life. A hundred million dollars, that means I only need to work two hours a week for the entire year to get that hundred million dollars. So at a wage of a million dollars an hour, I might say, look, I'm going to work two hours a week for the rest of the year, and then you know what, I'm going to retire and go to the beach. So rather than working more hours a week at a million dollars an hour, you'll work less hours. You'll become so rich, you'll become so wealthy, that you can have more leisure, more other goods, and work less. So your supply curve tends to slope the wrong way because of this income effect. The same thing happens on the demand curve. For example, let's say that you consume lots of apples. Let's imagine you spend three quarters of your income on apples. And the price of apples drops. It halves. Well now, your money can buy lots of things. You can still have the same number of apples as you did before, and you'll have a lot of money left over to buy oranges, bananas, pizzas, whatever you like. Indeed, you might have so much extra spending power because the price of apples has dropped that you might say, hey, I don't want to spend as much on apples. I don't want to have as many apples as before. I'm going to have fewer apples and more other things. So even though the price of apples has dropped, you may buy fewer apples because of that income effect. The drop in the price of apples has so much raised your real spending power, your real income, that you're actually going to buy fewer apples. So the demand curve slopes the wrong way due to the income effect. Now, in later courses you'll see more about the substitution effect and the income effect. That's all for this course. In this course we're going to keep our convenient assumption. Demand slopes down, supply slopes up. Remember, however, it's just a convenient assumption. It makes life easier for first year but there are lots of interesting questions that economists answer where demand and supply slope the wrong way. Thanks for listening. Talk to you next time.